Hello Riders and Rangers, welcome to your How To Fix Operation Overdrive Part 4, Veteran Rangers. The previous three parts are about the pilot arc, heroes, and villains. Ready? Overdrive, accelerate. Events before the 10th anniversary arc. Since this is an anniversary season, I am more than happy to have the once a ranger anniversary arc rather than two episodes. However, I would need to have a proper lead up and introduction to each ranger to the anniversary arc. There are five veteran rangers who were sprinkled across the season before the team up. 2 SPD Blue Ranger. Bridge. In an episode where Mac is struggling to become the Red Ranger when all the rest of his rangers were trapped by the powers of a Chiral, he felt guilty and powerless. The DER plans to destroy the Chiral part because it is too dangerous to contain, they are ordering Mr. Hartford to self-destruct the Zords, blowing up the Chiral item alongside the rangers in them. There were flashbacks where Mac's teammates were trapped during his travels to the Ice Caves to recover an ancient diamond when he was a treasure hunter. It was before his father made him take up the mantle of a Red Ranger. That event made him lose his friends and his limbs which are replaced by bionic ones. This post-traumatic stress affected Mac dearly. However, Bridge, SPD Ranger, arrives to help him cope with it. After Mac and Bridge have a heart-to-heart, -heart, while fighting back-to-back, -back, Bridge tells him he was not always the second-in-command Blue Ranger, he used to be a rookie. Bridge tells him leaders also support the team and they in turn support the leader back, it's a cycle. Both figuratively and emotionally. Spencer then shows the footage of the team while being trapped are very relaxed because they have faith in Mac as he had faith in them. Despite Mr. Hartford's warnings, Bridge has motivated Mac to use the dangerous Zord to push himself through to save his friends. Bridge also helped Mr. Hartford recalibrate the Zord so Mac can use it. Winking at Mr. Hartford, Bridge says he knows about Mac, since he is from the future, and Bridge figured out how to connect the circuit where Mac's body could bypass the Zord's excess powers. This also slowly helped Mac become a better field leader. When Mr. Hartford thanked Bridge and asked why he is here, he says the Mercurian SPD has summoned him from the future to deliver a Mercurian SPD Zord to them. Spencer looks confused as they haven't placed any orders yet nor met any Mercurians. Bridge said he had arrived too early and time traveled away. While fighting side by side with Bridge, Mac thinks there needs to be a powerful long-ranged sniper-like weapon which later inspired them to create the Drill Blaster. Power of Water Ninja Storm Blue, Tori. Sensing something is wrong, Dax leaves the dining room and heads to the command bunker. He encounters Tori, Ninja Storm Blue Ranger, who sneaked into Operation Overdrive. After a small fight between Dax and Tori, the two were tied. Tori reveals to him that she is looking for clues about the mysterious intergalactic warlord Thrax in their database. During that time, Dax then asked Tori to help him with his ninja training. Even though his senses are heightened, he is very weak in using ninja martial arts. Tori tries to teach him but he struggles. Later during a fight against Camder and Myratrix, Dax lost control of his ninja duplicates when Camder messed up his ninjutsu. Tori helps him out in clearing the Dax clones through using what he has. He was able to think on his feet and clear up the mess. After eradicating the ninjutsu clones, Dax realized he was able to clone energy strong enough to power up Tori's morpher. The two Blue Rangers fought side by side against Camder and Myratrix successfully. By the end of the episode, Mr. Hartford provided Tori with detailed files of overdrive and found nothing about Thrax. Dax tries to convince Tori to stay but Tori needs to investigate DER to find Thrax. Meeting Tori helps Dax with his insecurities about not mastering the ninja arts, since he finds himself useful in other ways. Terra Power Dino Thunder Yellow Ranger Our following veteran ranger showing up a number of episodes later would be Kira, Dino Thunder Yellow. She is there to deliver a piece of the White Tiger Sword scale from Dr. Tommy Oliver to Mr. Hartford. Dr. O says he would like to donate it to help the overdrive team out. Throughout the season, Ronnie has trouble adapting to new methods. The Rangers need help with a new combination of Zords which Ronnie refuses to assist recalibrating, since she is unhappy with the unfamiliar, worried it might lead to failure. Mr. Hartford decides to send Ronnie to clear her mind to meet Kira who is delivering the Tiger Sword scale from Dr. Tommy Oliver. After the two Yellow Rangers meet and fend off some goons trying to steal a piece of the White Tiger Sword scale, Ronnie learns from Kira about becoming familiar with the unfamiliar. Similar to Always a Chance, Kira reveals she misses being a Ranger. Thus, she did not pass on the chance when Dr. O asked her to help aid a team of Power Rangers. Kira reveals she still kept a damaged yellow Dino Morpher. The two made a good team fighting off goons but Kira kept on losing her powers in the middle of the fight. But with the unexpected team up between the Dino-themed heroine and a vehicle-themed warrior, this inspired Ronnie to figure out new combinations and add in her new calibrations. Sparking her creativity again, she aids Mr. Hartford to develop new combinations for future usages. Kira has inspired the team to find creative ways to improve their powers with better battle modes, more zords, and weapons when their powers aren't working properly. Over time, Ronnie holds Kira's words to heart and throughout the season, she was able to overcome her problem of being too competitive. Before Kira leaves, Ronnie gives a piece of yellow crystal, size of a grain of guitar pick, to Kira. Turns out it is a piece of Dino gem from Mr. Hartford that he has found. Ronnie says it is found within a meteorite from Mr. Hartford's space museum. It took him a while to refine it from the meteorite and barely finished taking out a piece of it. He believes it could help Kira restore her Dino Thunder powers. That's also another reason why Dr. O sent Kira on to deliver the Tiger Sword scale, Mr. Hartford told him he might have found another piece of the yellow Dino gem. Mr. Hartford is unable to activate its powers nor use it for the overdrive team. When Kira held the Dino gem to her morpher, it resonated with her it. 
Kira believes it might have been another piece of Dino gem splintered from her original one before it landed on Earth. Kira thanked the Rangers and Mr. Hartford as she took her leave to see if she could restore her Dino Thunder Yellow Ranger powers. On another note, Mr. Hartford asks Skin about anything unusual going on in DER, Skin tells Mr. Hartford to keep it a secret, the overdrive's Morphin grid seems to be leaking and they are unsure where the leak is and where the energy has gone to. Also, the Tiger Sword scale is missing from his vault. Mr. Hartford sighs in disappointment. Are all these shady things caused by Thrax? Bridge returns. A few episodes later after our Merku Ryan friend, Tizan joined the Overdrive team, Bridge returned, it was a Tizan-centered episode. The Fear Cats developed a technology which stuns the gyros, energy stabilizers, within the Rangers' main zords. Tizan was seething towards the Fear Cats, ignoring his main reason for saving civilians and focused on chasing after the Fear Cats. After Bridge appeared and the two fought together, they had a chat, Bridge helped Tizan return to his senses and brought altruistic justice and not to focus on violent vigilantism, reminding Tizan's purpose was a search and rescue agent, not an agent of fulfilling one's emotions like the Fear Cats. When Tizan was about to receive his sword, Mr. Hartford and Spencer had to keep it a secret. Although it seems more tactical to not hide the sword from its pilot, Mr. Hartford was actually borrowing Zord's blueprints from the current SPD stationed at Mercuria. Mr. Hartford needs to jump rope through a bunch of red tapes and bureaucracy before getting permission to get the three Zords. Mr. Hartford is also required to sign a non-disclosure agreement before receiving the Zord otherwise if all else fails, SPD could sue him. Thanks to SPD Mercuria base, they finally send in the Zords for Tizan which runs on Mercuria gyros which is highly effective against the Fear Cats. The gyros are the energy stabilizer in the overdrive suits. Mr. Hartford was only able to produce five gyros. These devices are found in past Zords, and unfortunately are in pieces. Mr. Hartford was forced to Frankenstein them. Tizan was lucky enough that his morpher is running on his astroship's gyros which is highly effective against the Fear Cats. Bridge was representing the SPD Earth branch, since SPD has not existed yet on Earth. He received and presented the Flashpoint Megazord to Tizan. The Flashpoint Megazord was able to defeat the Fear Cats. Mr. Hartford and Ronnie then reverse engineer the Mercuria Gyro so they can use it for their own Zords and suits. At the end of the episode, Bridge also helped with Tizan's condition and a few episodes down the line, they were able to remove the chiral mutation and place it all into his morpher, restoring Tizan's true Mercurian form, which basically looks human. Bridge also mentions that he will be promoted to be the leader of his branch soon but they never had the ceremony yet. Mr. Hartford asked Bridge about Thrax but Bridge has no idea about it nor anything about Overdrive history about its energy leakages. That part of the history is somehow erased. Mystery Villain, Thrax. First being tracked by Tori, for the rest of our next veteran rangers, they are also tracking down the intergalactic warlord Thrax. His energy signals point to Operation Overdrive and the DER but Mr. Hartford unfortunately could not provide any information to any of them. The reason why the rangers don't stick alongside to fight with the Overdrive rangers is that these villains may be ambitious but they are not to the world threatening scale yet. They are just scavengers, not world conquering types. Imagine a minor street gang who claims they want to rule the world. Strong as a tree green mystic ranger. Reaching the first quarter of the season, mystic force green ranger, Xander, shows up. He is on the mission to look for the sentinel sword. This sword is sentient but was placed in a long self coma during the battle between ancient mystics and the morlocks. Apparently, the demons captured and tortured it to reveal secrets, it placed itself in a mystical coma until touched by a comrade. Later, the sword was lost in battle. Apparently, Xander said that the sword belongs to Solaris Knight. Mr. Hartford says the sword is one of the first possessions he has found and he has placed it in one of the overdrive lockers for further studies because it keeps on producing residual energies. But when he opened the safe, the sword was missing. An unbreakable top-notch security safe in a room filled with rangers. How is it possible? On the other side of the city, there is a transaction between Camder and Myratrix with Flurius. The ninja villain faction gives Flurius the sword and Flurius returned them with a suitcase with the rare ancient diamond found in her ice cave. Flurius concludes Overdrive has a ninja mole within them while Camder ignores her and leaves. Back in the mansion, the Overdrive rangers are wedged against each other but Mac quickly calms them all down. He says the priority is to look for the sword. Xander decides to join the Overdrive team to recover that sword to ensure it won't end up in Thrax's hands because mystic sources tell him the warlord is looking for the sword. During their search for the Sentinel Sword, Xander helps Rose to become a strong second in command, as he was the second in command leader of the Mystic Force. Sometimes, Rose is overly serious and thinks regular entertainment is a waste of time which may be off-putting to other rangers. Her idea of a pastime would be training, reading tutorial manuals on Zords and checking on ranger data. Rose finds it hard for the other rangers to follow her lead. Although during ranger battles, Mac is the leader, she acts as second in command, facilitates Mac while being a no-nonsense nanny and assistant. As she spends more time on the ranger team, she learns how to actually emote and understand her emotions, later she lowers her walls. She is highly competent as she was actually one of the candidates for being a lightspeed rescue power ranger. However, she was turned down because she is too young. Xander tries to help Rose with her overly serious attitude. Xander was able to persuade Rose to be serious at heart but put on a playful cheerful attitude. In time, with Rose opening up to the rangers, they were able to work together better through cross-examining residue energy trials left behind by the sword. Rose is able to guide Mac to organize the team. Ronnie analyzed data collected in Tizan's detector and will found the energy trial. 
In the end, Dax using his information expertise found the Sentinel Sword was in Flurius's ice cave. Heading to her fortress to confront the Mad Mage, Flurius uses the Sentinel Sword to fight the Rangers. With the sword's power able to amplify her magic by a hundred folds, Flurius blasts the Rangers with an energy stun blast. The Overdrive Rangers and Xander were taken out of commission except Rose, as Xander jumped in front of Rose before the devastating attack. The stun blast from the Sentinel Sword deactivates the Rangers' tracker morphers. Xander, being a Mystic Force Ranger well versed with ancient mystics, created a charm which can deactivate the sword's powers. He gave it to Rose and Mr. Hartford. Rose and Mr. Hartford challenges Flurius and her chillers. Together, they manage to take out the chillers using an arsenal of military weapons. Confronting Flurius, Mr. Hartford, using Xander's charm, was able to seal the powers. Returning the sword into a calm coma state as it jumped out of Flurius's hands, Mr. Hartford catches it. With the sword being deactivated, Rose morphs into action and fights Flurius. The other rangers soon join her and they are able to defeat Flurius. After the battle, Xander sees the sentient mind of the sword has chosen his next wielder. However, its powers will not be activated until the chosen one truly believes in good magic. Meanwhile, in Flurius's ice cave, she is throwing a blizzard tantrum and Nork suggests they can always find a way to take back the sword. He passes a snow globe of the city they are in to Flurius. This gave Flurius an idea and she had to rest in hibernation for a while in order to complete her plan. Adam Park needs no introduction. In the second quarter of the season, another veteran appears, Adam Park shows up to look for Thrax. Mr. Hartford finally asks what is the deal with this intergalactic warlord. Adam reveals the information he has received from fellow veteran rangers. Thrax has been using Morphin Grid Energy Residue to create the current modified Fear Cats. He has been using them as an experiment, unleashing it to cause chaos just to see their power levels. It has been noted by the SPD Aquitar branch that Thrax has been purchasing items from the intergalactic black market. He has agreed to help the SPD Aquitar branch on this midnight run. For Thrax's history, he was originally Rita's apprentice but after her capture, he served under Zed back 10,000 years ago. With his prowess, Zed later adopted him as his heir to the Z throne. During the events of Countdown to Destruction, Thrax is present when Zordon's sea wave of goodness hits all the villains, but it was still unknown how he's unaffected by it. So far, the veterans have tracked him down onto Earth. Mr. Hartford tries to help him out but Adam was unable to pick up any traces of Morphin Grid leakage nor Thrax leads. Going through the histories of trackers and morphers, Adam dug deeper through the records, even though he didn't find Thrax, he found another secret. He quietly spoke to Mr. Hartford. Late at night, Will was out for a walk and Adam traced him. Adam reveals to Will he has found out about his secret. Will morphs into Overdrive Black and Adam morphs into Green Turbo Ranger. Two fights with Green Turbo easily overpowering Overdrive Black with speed. Adam goes on a monologue that he found out that Will has been working for Camder secretly. His guess was that Will was sent into Operation Overdrive to steal data and make his own company. A number of drastic problems that have happened, such as the Sentinel Sword going missing, the Overdrive Megazord being shut down and losing a piece of the Tiger Sword scale, Will was the one to blame. Overdrive Black finally catches up to Turbo Green and slams him with his drive hammer. Adam wants to teach Will about honor and respect, then he morphs into Zo Green Ranger. Will says there is no honor amongst thieves as Mr. Hartford started out being a treasure hunter, basically a thief. Adam says there is honor within Mr. Hartford, since the beginning, Mr. Hartford has figured out he is a traitor but wants to see him do better than just being Camder's double agent. Taking out Will with the Black Ninja Ranger powers, Adam says Will has been slowly turning back to the light, otherwise, he wouldn't have hit the Tiger Sword scale rather than giving it to Camder. Will is conflicted now. Adam then asks Will working in overdrive, hasn't it helped him realize that doing good slowly turns him good no matter how dark his intentions are? Will thinks to himself quietly as Adam demorphs. Will has a change of heart and decides to return the Tiger Sword scale back to Mr. Hartford. The two went to the hiding spot but are spotted by Myratrix and Camder. Adam morphs into the MMPR Black Ranger and Will becomes Overdrive Black Ranger. Myratrix and Camder use the Ninja Megazord powers but with Adam knowing all the Ninja Megazord tricks, he is able to evade the attacks and disappeared with Will. Back in the mansion at night, Will returns the Tiger Sword scale to Mr. Hartford and apologizes. Mr. Hartford is more than happy that Will has turned a new leaf and promises to keep the secret. Adam helps Will turn on his benefactors and decides to become loyal to the Overdrive team, realizing how important it is to be a ranger than just money. After Adam left, Ronnie and Mr. Hartford needed to figure out a way to stop the rebound of the Drill Blaster. Will realizes Adam has left blueprints of the White Tiger Ranger from MMPR. Rose thought about the design and produced the Defender Vest, this season's power-up, designed based off of MMPR White Ranger's shield. The Sentinel Knight. In the mid-season, Flurius, still bitter over losing the Sentinel Sword, schemes a plan to force Mr. Hartford to return it back to her. Seeing Flurius being out of the picture for a while, the Fear Cats pay her a visit to challenge her. Believing she'll be an easy prey, they confront Flurius in her ice cavern. Norg acts as a bodyguard and easily ties with them in hand-to-hand -hand combat. After the Fear Cats were weakened, Flurius greets her guests. Turns out, Flurius is very well rested and uses a huge fraction of her powers to control them and powers them up with her mystic chiral energy. Flurius sends an ice monster and Fear Cats to attack the city and it traps the entire city under an ice dome. Nothing could enter or leave. Even communications have been disrupted. As a side gag, Camder and Myratrix realize they are trapped outside of the dome, 
unable to enter the city again. By combining the two chiral light powers together, the powered up fear cats were too strong to handle by the overdrive rangers. The team was taken out and was kidnapped in exchange for the sentinel sword. Since Mr. Hartford doesn't have the power to wield the ranger suits nor zords, he proposes an alliance with Molter. Without warning, the magma behemoth traps Mr. Hartford inside volcanic cave-in. Moments later in the ice caverns, Molter meets Flurius for a trade. Flurius was not interested in a trade as the sword is rightfully hers, as she wields the powers of the mystic wizards. Norg and the feet cats enters and overwhelms Molter. Without warning, the sword jumps out of Flurius's hands and transforms into the Sentinel Knight. Molter holds back the fear cats and Norg, while the Sentinel Knight rescues the captured rangers. Behind Flurius's back, Nord helps the Sentinel Knights escape with the Rangers. Not sure why he did that. Seeing the Sentinel Knight has completed his mission, Molter leaves Flurius's caverns and sends his army to start breaking the ice dome. Once the Rangers were safe and far away from Flurius's fortress, the Rangers ask who is the Sentinel Knight. The Sentinel Knight demorphs and reveals to be Mr. Hartford. You know how awesome to have mentors fighting alongside with the Rangers. In Dino Thunder, we have Tommy back in action. In SPD, we have the Shadow Ranger. In Mystic Force, we have Mystic Force White Ranger. And the season after Overdrive, we have Jungle Fury Wolf Ranger. Wouldn't it be exciting to have another mentor figure fighting alongside the Rangers? Mr. Hartford explains to the Rangers that, in order for the Sentinel Sword's powers and potential unleashed, the worthy wielder must be pushed to the point of despair and find hope from within. Recalling to what happened earlier, during Mr. Hartford reaching out to Molter, the Flaming Colossus tells Mr. Hartford only the powers of the Sentinel Sword and Molter's forces can they be of match to the Fear Cats and Flurious's Ice Monster. But because Molter isn't chosen by the soul of the Sentinel Knight, he cannot wield its powers. Mr. Hartford says he couldn't wield it either. Molter disagrees and tells Mr. Hartford it will work as long as he believes in good magic. Molter sensed the bond between Mr. Hartford and the sword, the Sentinel Knight has marked him as the chosen one ever since he has found it. It is still waiting for Mr. Hartford to be pushed to his limits. Then, Molter trapped him in a cave to push his fighting spirit. Molter says there is only enough oxygen within the cave in for 30 minutes, if Mr. Hartford hyperventilates, he only has 15 minutes. Recalling how he felt, all alone now and holding the sword, Mr. Hartford was in a crumbling state of anxiousness. Feeling the sword, closes his eyes and calms himself down. Rather than wishing he could be a warrior, he believes he can become one. That moment resonated with the soul of the Sentinel Knight. It spoke to Mr. Hartford if he had a belief strong in magic that Mr. Hartford could wield the powers of the Sentinel Knight. Then this is our season clip show, where it shows how worthy Mr. Hartford is and how he interacted with his rangers. His rangers help him grow as a stronger person. Mr. Hartford says he believes that magic could achieve the impossible. Thus, the soul of the Sentinel Knight bestowed its powers to Mr. Hartford, becoming the Sentinel Knight, breaking out of Molter's cave in. Molter, seeing the Sentinel Knight, offers an alliance with his army of lava lizards, since he isn't too much of a fan of endless winter. Now back to the present, the Fear Cats and Flurious's ice monster catch up to the Rangers and Mr. Hartford. The Sentinel Knight powers have granted the team a quantum leap. Once the Fear Cat were about to be destroyed, they quickly went into hiding. Flurious transferred powers from the ice dome to that ice monster, transforming it into a giant. As a gag, Myratrix punches the ice wall the moment it disappeared, she thinks her ninja powers worked and Camder looks at her with derision. The Sentinel Knight was able to grow into the size of a Megazord and defeat Flurius's Titan-sized monster. After rescuing the Overdrive Rangers, they return to base. The team celebrates that Mr. Hartford could finally fulfill his dream in becoming part of the Power Rangers Overdrive team. He no longer needs to sit idly by, envying his Rangers, but fight in the front line to support them. However, the Sentinel Knight powers are far too strong for him and he needs to rest immediately. In future episodes, Mr. Hartford needs to figure out if he should lead in the command bunker or fight alongside the Rangers because it takes a lot of concentration and energy to wield its incredible yet taxing powers. Nord chuckles quietly as Flurius's attempt in creating a giant monster and ice dome has decimated a huge fraction of her strength. On another note about Norg, he has been messing up a lot of Flurius's plans, allowing the rangers to collect more residue energies. Thank you for watching How to Fix Operation Overdrive Part 4. In our next part, it will be the long-awaited Once a Ranger arc. How do you have written for the veterans? Who do you have preferred to have returned? What did you think about the actual TV episode Once a Ranger? Please comment below, give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe.